Hello, my name is David Hart, and I'll be presenting our paper titled Practical Product Sampling by Fitting and Composing Warps. This is work from NVIDIA Research with Matt Farr, Thomas Mula, Ward Lopes, Morgan McGuire, Peter Shirley, and myself. The goal of this work is to increase the efficiency of path tracing by reducing noise. Here's a small teaser of the results of the method we'll describe. On the left are a couple of images rendered with standard practice techniques, and on the right you can see the same images with significantly reduced noise, rendered with just one sample per pixel. The goal of this talk is not really to explain all the details of our paper, but to give just the key concepts and intuitions to be sort of a map to reading the paper. The approach we're going to present is for sampling the lights, so the product at hand is the direct lighting integral, which is the terminating end of all paths when path tracing. When it's formulated as an integral over the hemisphere, the direct lighting integral is made up of three terms, the material scattering function, the incoming light, and the contribution or solid angle. And as you know, we're going to solve this integral using Monte Carlo estimation by evaluating random samples of the integrand and averaging the results. Now, one of the most important and commonly used tools we have for Monte Carlo sampling is the inversion method, where we can create an ideal sampling function for the distribution we're trying to sample as long as we can analytically integrate and then invert this distribution. In one dimension, the distribution is called the probability density function, or PDF for short. The sampling function is called the inverse cumulative distribution and also goes by the names warp and quantile. In this talk, when I refer to a warp, I'm talking about the inverse cumulative distribution. Another important tool at our disposal is important sampling, which allows us to draw samples from almost any non-uniform distribution P in order to estimate the integral of a different function F. But to use this method, we need to have a warp for P and we also need to be able to evaluate P. Any reasonable choice of importance function will work here and be statistically unbiased. Reasonable mostly means the importance function P is greater than zero whenever F is greater than zero and P integrates to one. The primary difference in outcome when choosing different importance functions is just efficiency. If P is similar to F, then our estimator will have low variance, but P doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. We would just like it to be better than no importance function on average, because when that happens, noise goes down and efficiency goes up. We can make our integration more efficient by choosing P carefully, but since it's unbiased, we can't accidentally make it wrong. By the way, the inversion method can just be thought of as a special case of important sampling where P is equal to F and variance is minimized. Multiple important sampling is yet another indispensable tool that is standard practice in path tracing. MIS is a way to take samples from separate terms of a summer product and combine them in a way that generally reduces variance. While MIS is a nice safety net against any poorly performing individual sampling strategies, it doesn't really give you any guarantees. Since you bring your own set of sampling strategies, MIS can't really help you if you have no sampling strategies that match the product. This means it's always useful to continue searching for better sampling strategies. In 1995, James Arvo published a now widely used method for sampling the solid angle of triangles uniformly, which is a big improvement, for example, over area sampling of lights. More recently, Urania et al. extended this method to quad light sources. A little bit later, Arvo published a general inversion method recipe for sampling surfaces that makes the important conceptual distinction between a 2D warp in primary sample space and the parametric mapping from primary sample space onto 3D surfaces. Of course, this still comes with this, the inversion method caveat that you have to be able to integrate and invert your distribution. In the same notes, Arvo also gave us a way to sample the cosine weighted solid angle of an arbitrary non-convex polygon, where he used numeric root finding for the inversion step to find a warp. Since then, there's been a lot of recent excellent work on solving product sampling in general that is related to and has inspired our work, including using neural networks that can learn warps for important sampling using gradient descent methods. Okay, so the problem at hand is to integrate the direct lighting. And currently common practice is to partition the integral into parts according to the known warps that we have, sample them separately, and then use multiple important sampling to combine the samples. So here is the core of our idea. There is a way to combine separate warps, and we're gonna show how using fitting and function composition. We also have a growing collection of known warps by excellent previous work, some of which can be fit and used for function approximation. 
So instead of partitioning the integral into separate sampling strategies, let's try to build an important sampling function for the whole integral, and one that is good enough to increase efficiency. And by the way, since we're just making a sampling strategy, we can use this with multiple important sampling and combine it with other sampling strategies. When we compose warping functions, the resulting density function is a product of the corresponding individual densities. But notice that we sample each term of the product with a different warped sample at each step. This is in contrast to evaluating our target product where we evaluate all the terms in the target product using the same sample point. Since composing warps yields a product, but not exactly the product we want, we'd like to ask the question, can we create warps that when composed together will produce the product distribution we want? And if so, how? Well, since the density of a composed warp is a product, we can see that in theory, we only need one more term to create an optimal importance function. This theoretical term would have a density that is the ratio of our target distribution to the composed warp distribution so far. Unfortunately, this formula only gives us the density function we want, but not the warp. And worse, since this expression involves f, we're right back to the original problem of needing to be able to integrate and invert f. All is not lost though, because knowing what the missing term is helps us to fit warps that can approximate the discrepancy. We can point sample the missing density. The first thing we can do to start approximating our correction term is to fit a warp in such a way that it compensates for the effects of the warps that come after it in evaluation order. If we're fitting an approximating warp to one of the terms in the integrand, we can achieve this compensation by applying the later warps to the sample points we use for fitting the current warp before sampling the integrand term. In the limit, a densely sampled approximating function will perfectly compensate, while using a less expressive approximating warp will of course result in some approximation error, but potentially make up for it in speed. In order to achieve our goal of an overall importance function that is more efficient, we've chosen to use some extremely simple warps that can approximate individual terms in the integrand, or even subterms of the BSDF. These bilinear and biquadratic functions have known inverse CDFs that are also very simple, making them really fast to evaluate and really fast to fit. Okay, so let's start with a really simple but surprisingly effective example. We'll start by combining only two warps, Arvo or Urania's uniform solid angle warp and a bilinear warp to approximate the missing cosine term. If the cosine warp approximation is good, this should give us an approximately cosine weighted solid angle distribution. The bilinear term, of course, isn't a perfect fit for the cosine, but because the cosine term is slowly varying, the bilinear warp is a decent approximation. And as we'll see, we end up with significantly higher sampling efficiency on average than if we had not used the warp. In this particular case, bilinear is also convenient and extremely fast to fit because the control points to fit are at the boundary of primary sample space. So they map to the vertices of the spherical triangle and take on the value of the cosine term at the vertices. Note that the existing solid angle warp is not an approximating warp and doesn't have any fitting parameters. So it needs to be applied first because it can't compensate for any other warps. The warp for the cosine term can then be fit to the solid angle warp. Once we've fit our warps and we're ready to sample, the procedure is absolutely straightforward. These algorithms are redundant in the sense that they're repeating the math notation, but we wanted to emphasize and clarify just how easy the implementation is. The procedure on the left for sampling simply applies each warp in succession to the sample point and accumulates the density product along the way. The procedure on the right is just the same thing run in reverse in order to evaluate the probability density of a given point in space. One thing to notice is that the density evaluation involves the inverse warp or what we normally think of as the cumulative density function or CDF. So in general, we need to have available all three functions, the density, the cumulative, and the inverse cumulative or warp. For our results, we added composed warp sampling to the PBRT renderer and used this implementation for all the timing measurements.
The source code for our implementation and more results are included in the supplemental material. And all of the images here are rendered using only one sample per pixel with multiple important sampling, meaning one light sample and one BSDF sample. The efficiency metric we're using is the reciprocal of the product of mean squared error with rendering time. Because the efficiency numbers are relative, the default baseline of comparison we use is what we believe to be the most common current industry practice of sampling lights using the Arvo Urenia uniform solid angle sampling method. The first result we're showing is the approximate cosine weighted solid angle sampling using two warps. This is the same thing I described three slides ago. With a single bilinear approximating warp for the cosine term, we get 1.7 times efficiency increase compared to uniform solid angle sampling, where uniform solid angle sampling is along the top row and our cosine warp is along the bottom row. A biquadratic warp for the cosine term, which is not shown here, performs slightly better than that with a 1.9x efficiency factor increase. Note that the efficiency numbers here are averaged over the whole image, which has a large soft shadow. Since we're not accounting for visibility in our warps, or not yet anyway, the relative efficiency changes depend on whether a given sample point is in a penumbra region or is unoccluded. In the middle row, we're also comparing Arvo's method for cosine weighted solid angle sampling. We found that for a diffuse BRDF, Arvo's method is 28% more efficient than our composed warp. Or another way to look at it is that you can get much better than uniform solid angle sampling and to within 70% of the ideal sampling method with almost no effort by composing just a single additional bilinear warp. In contrast, Arvo's cosine weighted solid angle sampling is rather difficult to implement and the sampling procedure alone is quite slow. The next result we have is to apply warp composition to the problem of sampling bilinear patches. In this case, since there is no known solid angle sampling method for bilinear patches, the baseline of comparison on the left is uniform parametric sampling. In the center column, we composed one bilinear warp with the parametric warp, and the bilinear warp tries to compensate for the parametric stretch in the bilinear patch and approximate uniform area sampling. That alone yields a speed up of more than two and a half times. On the right, we further extend the warp chain to approximate a solid angle term and a cosine term, and the result is more than five times efficiency improvement. The small thumbnails on the bottom are a visualization of mean squared error. Now, this result isn't very surprising since uniform parametric sampling is even worse than area sampling, but we're demonstrating two important ideas here. One, that composing three or four or more warps can be effective, and two, that we now have a sort of general recipe for approximating the cosine weighted solid angle sampling for arbitrary or unusual geometries. Our third and most complete result applies composed warps to the problem of full BSDF product sampling using a non-diffuse BSDF in a complex scene. We again here compare to uniform solid angle sampling on the left. On the right side, we've added a new type of comparison. The exhaustive BSDF sampling strategy is a densely sampled table of the full BSDF product. This allows us to estimate what the best possible sampling error is, at least without accounting for visibility. We also switch here to using mean relative squared error in order to combat fireflies, since we're only using one sample per pixel. For this view of the table and chair in the kitchen scene, a BSDF product warp is a little over 50% less error than separate solid angle and BSDF sampling. In contrast, exhaustive BSDF sampling here shows us that an ideal sampler might reduce error by more than a factor of two. For a different view of the kitchen scene, looking at the stove front, the composed warp performs a bit better, giving us an error reduction of almost 2.4 times. And in this case, the measured error using a composed warp for the BSDF product gives the same error as the exhaustive sampling strategy, meaning for this specific view, it may not be possible to further reduce the sampling error unless we incorporate visibility into the sampling strategy. In summary, our paper presents a framework for important sampling of a product integrand by fitting and composing multiple warps. We've explored the application of this framework 
using simple bilinear and biquadratic warps to approximate the remaining direct lighting integral terms that are not covered by solid angle sampling. We demonstrated efficiency gains relative to common practices on three separate use cases. Cosine weighted solid angle sampling of triangle and quad lights, cosine weighted solid angle sampling of bilinear patch lights, and BSDF weighted solid angle sampling of the full BSDF product integrand. In some cases, we've observed warp approximations achieving near optimal sampling error with visibility neglected. The effort to implement warp composition is pretty low. The code is non-invasive to a renderer and for us added up to a total of about 100 lines of code and we're providing our source code for reference. Some potential directions for future work include using a wider variety of warps, including more expressive warps. We'd like to further explore how to choose warps and in what order to best apply them. Our exhaustive sampling strategy reminds us that sampling the lights without considering visibility in the sampling function has a limit on quality. That improving sampling with warps is approaching that quality limit and that the obvious step for further efficiency improvements is to begin to account for visibility when sampling. Lastly, we expect there are additional sampling techniques we could apply warp composition to beyond light sampling. Thank you for your attention, and also thanks to the paper reviewers and to NVIDIA Research for supporting this work.